guys, welcome back. This is my beat up Hyundai Tiburon that I bought over a month ago. It's got issues all around, but I started with diagnosing the engine because it's got some top end ticking and a pretty nasty misfire that's robbing me of the mind boggling performance from the 2.7 liter V6 engine. So far, I've replaced the spark plugs, inspected the top and bottom end, and did a compression test. And to my surprise, I didn't find anything majorly wrong other than some vertical markings on the cylinder wall and the gray engine oil that came out of it. So starting today, I'm going to go over all the sensors and electrical components. The first and easiest thing to check is the MAF sensor. Last time I took this off, it passed the visual test, but judging from the rest of this car, it might be a cheap aftermarket sensor. So, it does say Simeon's or Simon's and the part number i don't see any hyundai logos and this is a three pin and the reason i mentioned that is because this one from the junkyard is a five pin uh, this was out of a 2005 and 2006 car so that's probably why it's different but uh, in terms of the actual sensor itself it's actually quite different but i think this is a genuine one and the sensor itself was pretty clean, so I moved on to the O2 sensors. I cleared the codes a while back and drove it a few miles and pulled the codes again. I didn't get a check engine light, but there were two codes stored in it which were P1166 and P1167. These two codes are for the air to fuel ratio being too rich and too lean. It was odd to me how it was throwing both at the same time, but I assume the computer is getting readings all over the place so it's trying to compensate on both ends. I also knew from visual inspection that this is one of the shadiest parts of the engine and the O2 sensors being very critical to air to fuel ratio, I was excited to check these out. Huh? What? That was... This is loose. This is... Oh, are you kidding me? Hold on. Yeah, see? This is not tight at all. <laughs> Okay, that's the first one. Ah, you got it, eh? Man, this is too long. I don't know if I should call myself lucky or this is unfortunate because. I heard these O2 sensors are really stuck in there, but so far the first one I removed was not tight at all, and this was pretty easy to remove with just a wrench. There's the second one. Okay, so this one was the really suspicious wiring. It's after the cat, so it shouldn't cause a misfire, but still, this is something that I wanted to remove and see what's going on. Oh man, this is hard to remove too. There's like a hard line right here. So you can't put the wrench in. Oh, the <laughs> Wow. Holy crap, this is black. Wow. You guys seeing this? Definitely not the right one. Wow. Hi. Can you tell her? Wow, that's loose too. <laughs> so far, all of them were quite loose except for the, the wrong one that I just removed. Ha, ah, that's black too. Which is expected. So the bank one before cat sensor says part number OX24461 and then after the cat is there's just nothing on here I have no idea what this is this nonsense right here <laughs> and bank two before cat is OX24461 and then after the cat it's OX24783 
I found that these part numbers are from Walker products and although they're not an OEM company, they seem to be quite reputable. Looking at the Rock Auto parts list, the 24783 should be at the bank 1 downstream and the 24461 should be at the remaining 3 locations. However, my bank 1 downstream was occupied by the universal one and one of the 3 that should all be 24461 had the 24783. I also got some suggestions from my newtoburn.com mentors to check the ECU, which reminded me how the ECU was dangling down from the bottom of the glove box during the first test drive, so it was definitely worth checking out. So this ECU came out of the car and definitely I can see something wrong because my car is a 2004 and this ECU is from uh, July 4th, 2002. And this lettering definitely doesn't look stock. So I contacted the previous owner and he told me that the previous owner before him switched the ECU. And clearly they did with the wrong one. So I did some research and Chase over at newtobron.com helped me out a lot. So shout out to Chase. And I got this one, which is from 2003. And more importantly, this is a 5WY17 version, whereas the other one is a 15. So the main difference between the 15 and the 17, at least for our purposes here, is that the 15 version runs on a 5 volt O2 sensor system, and the 17 version runs on the 1 volt system, which my car is because it's a 2004. And I found that somewhere in 2003, Hyundai switched from a 5 volt to a 1 volt. So my car is a one volt car but it was running a five volt ecu so i'm gonna plug this in right now and i got two new o2 sensors for bank one which you saw was the two black ones so i'm gonna change these and i hope the car runs better knock on wood and these connectors are all different sizes so you can't <sighs> something's wrong with my gimbal man so all of these connectors are different sizes so you can't really mess up all right, so it's all plugged in. So the misfire is completely taken care of. I would have never guessed that the ECU was the problem. So thank you Chase and everyone else at newtebron.com. And by the way, the forums have this vast collection of knowledge and I think that's an amazing thing. And this is true for any make and model. For those that know a little bit about ECUs, you know that this one is from a Hyundai Sonata V6. So currently it has the Sonata mappings and it's technically not even a Tiburon at this point. So on the next video, I'm going to be going over how we can make this ECU into a Tiburon ECU like it's supposed to be. Chase over at newtiburon.com has an open source website called OpenGK and he put a lot of information on here including how to flash the tunes and stuff like that and I didn't want to get into too much detail on this video. So the video after this one will be about how to reflash a Tiburon tune onto the Sonata ECU I have right there. So now that the car is running well except for the ticking, uh, I'm gonna focus more attention on the exterior and interior upgrades and I'm gonna take care of the ticking on the side probably off camera or I might make a video on that if I ever discover 
what the cause of that is. So I'm excited for what's ahead and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.